Wait, remember Pixel Perfect? Well, I sure started thinking about it recently as next month the Disney Channel original movie will officially be 20 years old. That makes me feel old. But with this being a TV movie and you're pumped up singing along, getting all ready to watch a Disney Channel movie and everyone's jumping in the air like it's the opening for George Lopez, whew, yeah, I I'm starting to restore my youth a bit here. Pixel Perfect is a perfect example of what these DCOMs were all about. There's a Disney Channel star in the lead before he would be leading the classic show, Phil of the Future, later the same year. There's music, because there has to be. It's the mid-2000s. It was mandatory. And there's bound to be some things that may not have aged well. So it sure sounds like a fun time to me. In fact, over the next year, I may be taking a look at more Disney Channel original movies, since I have this driving urge to dive back into the ones I've seen, but haven't watched in a very long time. So I hope you are prepared to look back into some of these hopefully classic TV movies, and some that maybe aren't so classic, but nevertheless, I am eager to give Pixel Perfect a rewatch after all this time. In an age where holograms, digital performances, and dances that can be replicated on TikTok are here, the film could be ahead of its time, and just might be fit to watch these days anyway. So let's get into Pixel Perfect. Welcome back to the 25 Days of Fringe Miss, where there's going to be brand new- Wait, 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 wait. Uh-uh. Ah, double fringe miss. Aw, you only thought you were gonna get 25 videos this year? Look at you. You look silly. But I'm here to fix that because I'm gonna give you not only 25 videos, but I'm giving you 50 videos. I have two channels. That's two fringe misses. Each day there'll be a brand new video on both channels for 25 days. I haven't slept in months. Enjoy the content. Or don't. We follow our main character of Roscoe, who happens to know how to mess with holographic technology in the year 2004. It's his dad's equipment for his job, but hey look, he can make cats, and that's pretty neat. But this is just for fun, he's portrayed as the more nerdier character with all the smarts necessary to fit the role of a typical nerd in something like a Disney Channel movie. You can tell because of the glasses, obviously, that's the dead giveaway. But he's a nerd who likes to rock, as he is always showing support to his best friend Samantha and her band. But something is off that sets off a chain of events to get the movie going and that's thanks to a performance at a club where the owner cuts them off at one point over the lack of stage presence. The music is not the full problem here, it's the flashiness of the performance being the issue, as Sam gets called out that she needs to not just be singing and playing her instrument, but showing off some sort of dance skills. Her attempt to do so results in this awkward dancing akin to what Ashley Simpson would go on to do on SNL later that same year. Yes, this movie is even older than that very memorable moment. But with this clearly not working for the band and feeling like they now have this missing component that could change things for the better apparently if they had it, Roscoe starts taking the idea into his own hands to really help out, and after getting no help from his work busy and distant father, he has an epiphany when working with the holographic tech. If Sam doesn't have the moves on stage to have that rock star pop star flair, then why not build just that? The perfect performer, oh sorry, the pixel perfect performer. It makes sense now, doesn't it? She's gonna be made to be perfect and made from pixel on a screen. I see what you did there, Disney. Roscoe starts cross-referencing all of the top talent in the entertainment industry, putting together a lead performer that could have it all, the voice, the moves, and maybe this could be the winning formula to help out the band. We'll be back with the Disney Channel original movie, Pixel Perfect. We're back with the Disney Channel original movie, Pixel Perfect. Outside of Roscoe's work into this, the band themselves are trying to test out bringing in someone to be the lead vocalist who can also dance, leading to Sam feeling bad about herself a bit since this kind of is all thrown on her as the issue. And this also leads to a bunch of really bad auditions that are far off from what they would need to step in to solve their lack of stage presence problem. But then, unbeknownst to the band themselves, in walks Loretta. And spoiler alert, that's the hologram Roscoe made and then my brain starts going through all the unrealistic ways of how this technology actually works, and how the music and the physicality come into play, but maybe Roscoe is just a teenage prodigy way ahead of his time akin to Jimmy Neutron. Heck, Jimmy Neutron couldn't make a hologram as real and autonomous as this. Regardless of that, she auditions for the band and blows them away, having the vocal talents to impress them all, but more importantly, a bunch of dance moves that at least proved to look like what dancing looked like back in the 2000s. So there's a win, I guess. But when the the jam session is over, the digital cat is out of the bag as Sam trips and falls through Loretta, freaking everyone out as yes, surprise, surprise, she's a ghost and this movie starts genre bending into horror, is what would have totally been a really shocking twist, but nah, she's just a hologram. 
and the band just accepts that. Roscoe then goes into how he did this and how it all works, and also humble bragging that his dad couldn't even do something on this level with the technology, like we get it, you have daddy issues, and you can now make virtual women. Congratulations there, bud. Yes, there is a level of logic in the movie that asks you to let go of the reality of things. Like, I get this is a movie made for a kid's TV channel from 2004, so maybe it's the adult in me going, wait, that's unrealistic and doesn't make sense. And maybe the target demographic that this was for, aka me 20 years younger, could have just taken it at face value. But it doesn't feel like it even tried to make me believe. Rather, it's just telling me that this is how it is, and I have to accept that? At least with Smart House, I feel like there was more believability thanks to some deeper explanations of how that all operates, and no, I will never not waste a chance to bring up that cinematic masterpiece. And maybe if I'm ever so lucky to hit a million subscribers, I'll make a video on it. This Double Fringe Miss is brought to you by Gamer Subs. If you heard rumors about yesterday, I'm here to tell you they're correct. After you guys literally took all of the free samples away from Gamer Subs, I asked them, hey, could we do that again for them? Can we make the free samples absolutely free? No shipping and handling, no credit card required. You just hit add to cart, it's zero, 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 and it ships directly to you wherever you're at. And they said, yeah, all right. There's only 48 hours to get those free samples for you to just try it. I just want you to try it. And technically, now we're down to 24 hours. I really hope when I'm editing this, I put a funny joke about the show 24, the clock ticking down. So go ahead, get your free samples absolutely free while you still can. And if you're looking to buy something anyway, I have a code for you. It's called Code Fringe. It gets you 10% off and it really supports the channel. Then there's this whole other thing about Loretta not being able to be projected as a hologram outside, literally disintegrating when exposed to the outdoors like she's a vampire or something. Like this breaks her coding or some explanation like that, forcing Roscoe to fix or repair her if this happens, even though she's a projection supposedly and should just be fine again. But logically, we just get told to go with it. But before I get lost in all of that, it's time for the band's first performance with Loretta. And wow, who would have guessed? A little dancing and more vocal range and they're a hit. It goes over really well and she even does this insane flip. But the movie needs that classic decom drama baby, so how about having the hologram start developing an existential crisis? As Roscoe is seeing that on camera, it's clear that she's not a real person, having all these scan lines and other filters over her. And what would the world think of a digital artist completely made up on a computer? Well, nowadays we have that here and there, and if it's done right, they garner a real audience. Or if you go full AI and get whatever this abomination is, is. Hello world, my name is Anna Indiana. Roscoe was able to do this in 2004, in one night, with a box of scraps. Loretta seems to be sad or feeling something beyond her created purpose, just being a hologram and used for the band's benefit. There's also another bit of drama that comes from a supposed friend at school whose mom is the boss of Roscoe's father, and this friend wants a date with Loretta after seeing that performance and holds this potentially job-ruining proposition regarding Roscoe's father's work by hinging on getting this date, leading to him saying he'll convince his mom not to shut down his father's hologram projects. Well, all right then. So that's that's another angle to worry about or not really, but beyond that, we need love in this movie. In fact, that love needs to be a shape, specifically a triangle. This stems first from Sam, who already has this resentment building towards Loretta for how perfect she is meant to be compared to her own so-called flaws, with not being perfect or able to have that kind of stage presence. And Sam and Roscoe, like I mentioned at the start, have been really close friends and it's the real reason he even hangs around with the band and helps them out in general. She has clear feelings for Roscoe and he's kind of ambitious ambiguous with his towards her but it seems like he's starting to be into Loretta, which makes tensions higher between Sam and Loretta. Man, Roscoe being into a hologram? Truly a guy ahead of his time, and not in the fill of the future way. Loretta seems to be beyond just the initial programming that Roscoe created, as she has her own thoughts, her own personality, and honestly, truly is more like sentient AI than anything. And if Roscoe's not careful, he could be the one to bring on the rise of Skynet and the downfall of humanity as we know it. But for now, it's Loretta snapping back at Sam when they are having some confrontation, as well as having wants to know what it's like to feel the rain, knowing she isn't technically real. There's some legit heavy and interesting themes here, so now I'm starting to forgive all that random nonsensical logic from earlier. Things get a bit creepier from Sam's perspective when she ends up snooping around Roscoe's work in developing Loretta, seeing the examples of women and their different features in order to make the perfect woman, the pixel perfect woman. All right, I'll stop doing that. But now it's time for the band to perform again, and this time it's back at the club where the whole thing started at and things are going well. She's doing her flips, she's rocking out, the crowd's loving it, but when a news van outside
inside has a case of SD, satellite dysfunction. The news signal points to Loretta inside and causes her to begin to glitch and turn partially into the news broadcast and exposing to everyone that in fact, Loretta is not a real person and everyone is apparently into it. Even more importantly, a talent scout was in the audience and does the whole back to the future thing, calling the record company and telling them to listen to this at the concert. And from there, life is changing for the band and the media is all eyes on Loretta, breaking the logic established earlier where she has this issue being seen on cameras to now being on TV and not having those issues. But hey, the logic in this movie is so little and scattered around anyway, I guess it doesn't even matter. We'll be back with the Disney Channel original movie, Pixel Perfect. We're back with the Disney Channel original movie, Pixel Perfect. Through this media attention and being discovered, the band get to start producing a real album in a studio, and even Roscoe is starting to get jealous of others coming for Loretta, or how they perceive Loretta. And this leads to a fight between Roscoe and Loretta since she's so sentient anyway, being mad at Roscoe for claiming to always want to update and change her, not accepting her for who she is. Again, there's something genuinely interesting with this part of the concept, and how she views this whole situation, and how she interacts with her technical creator. And I kind of wish the whole movie was focused on this, but Roscoe didn't heed my warning about the consequences of his actions, as the fight ends in Loretta touching a monitor and uploading her hologram self to the internet, and this could either be a sappy romantic plot point to find her and make things right, or she turns into a digital virus like Diaboramon in the Digimon movie. Who knows, right? Well, it's kind of like neither of those options, actually. And for Loretta's experience within the internet, it's more like Ralph breaks the internet. So take that as you will. Now that Roscoe and the band can't seem to locate her and get her back in time for their next big performance, they end up disguising Sam as Loretta to go out on stage to sing and dance. But this ends in tragedy. Her dance moves were so dangerous and uncoordinated that it lands her on her head, stage diving right into a coma. It's comically dramatic both in tone of how it's portrayed and how ridiculous it overall looked. But worry not, Loretta magically reappears to Roscoe in the hospital to see that Sam is unconscious and hooked up to some wires, giving her the idea to save the day and also bring in more freakier concepts to a film filled with so much of that already for some reason. She ends up going into the machine to travel through the wires and go inside of her brain to try and fix things, despite Roscoe's warning of not being able to come back from this since it's different technology that isn't connected to the internet and who knows what happens when you put a hologram inside the brain of another, I mean it's the logic here, I'm just, I'm just going with what the movie's telling me at this point. But what she can do is body possess Sam, waking up controlling her body just so that she can go outside and touch the rain, knowing what it feels like to feel something. And as humans, all we want is to feel something the truest form of being a complex sentient being filled with emotions and carbon. We also see what it's like in the mind of Sam in the coma, which is just her kind of sitting around, not really doing anything at all. But at least it's a cool way to visualize this exact moment. In the rain though, Loretta releases control back to Sam, fully waking her back up as Loretta now disappears for good. Life can go on now for Sam and Roscoe and the other members of the band who the film barely gives the time of day as the film goes on, with Sam continuing her singing minus the dancing, and maybe the perfect girl for Roscoe was right there in front of him all this time minus the pixels. And then the film turns into Star Wars, as they see or collectively hallucinate a ghost projection of Loretta watching over them and singing along with them or something. Like it doesn't feel like it's in the metaphorical sense. I think she's genuinely appearing to haunt them as a pixel ghost or something. Truly a weird genre bending film if you ask me. It had it all. Holograms, music, existential questions about what it means to be alive, love, success, internet uber drivers, body possession, and even ghosts. And that's Pixel Perfect. A movie that isn't perfect itself, but that almost feels pertinent to what the film was trying to represent and say. So from that point of view, the film kind of works itself out in the end. I still think the majority of the logic is so flawed it's laughable, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't have a good time re-watching this film because I was laughing quite a bit throughout. Definitely for the wrong reasons, but that doesn't mean those reasons invalidate my enjoyment. I feel like this film lives on in that middle ground of memorable and forgotten DCOMs. It didn't hit the lasting impressions of the many other TV movies for the channel around it, but it has a name and base premise that's hard to forget. And yes, of course, the music in the film also doubled as a physical CD with eight tracks on it to do the thing that Disney loves to do, creating more entertainment avenues outside of one initial avenue. But this isn't the same as stuff like The Cheetah Girls, High School Musical, or Hannah Montana. It's not a great film or even an all-time sleeper hit from the many incredible Disney Channel original movies out there, but if you can find the humor and enjoyment in the ridiculous 
ridiculousness here, you may end up having a good time revisiting Pixel Perfect. But if you want another Disney property that had good old Roscoe here in it, and it has holograms and other futuristic stuff that takes place also in the year 2004, then I recommend Phil of the Future. And yes, of course, I already have done a video on that. Let me know your thoughts on Pixel Perfect in the comments below. Is it a classic? You tell me. I've been Jordan Fringe. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Later.